Welcome back to Ben's Garage. We're going to do a bit of a solar update. I say over my shoulder, we have the inverter. I'm not doing very well on solar today because it's a bit cloudy, <laughs> but it has been fantastic. Um, trouble is, we've got apps for EDF, we've got apps for the inverter. You keep looking at the apps or we keep coming through and pressing the button, seeing what, what power's coming in. Whether that novelty will wear off, I do not know. But when the old inverter starts, you can hear it, it starts, the fans start cutting in when there's a lot of power coming in, charging the batteries up. And it's like, way, we'll have some of that, free power. We're just gonna go over some stats for December. Now, December is the month where we had it first in, you know, up and running. At the start of December, I just had a few circuits on it. So we was running the outside, which is the boiler, the washing machine, the lights out in the barn and the cow shed. We was running the fridge and freezer. Oh, and we've got a freezer outside as well, and my oven. Now, we had just those circuits on up until the 17th of December. And on the 17th of December, I put all the house sockets, so all the power points in the house are now on solar. So the only, and also the hot water heater. So the only things that's not on solar now is the Hobbit's oven and the kettle. Um, the kettle because it draws two kilowatts every time you switch it on, and the Hobbit's oven combined is 11 kilowatts. <laughs> Not like you have all the, I mean, it's a range cooker thing with electric ovens, electric grill, gas hob. Um, but combined, that's 11 kilowatts. But So that's still on the grid. Now, we are grid tied, so if we don't get enough power, um, we can use utility power as a backup. Now, the way I've got this inverter set, there's so many settings on it. Output source is I've got that set for SBU, which is solar battery utility. So when you put a load on the inverter, it's gonna get powered by solar first. If there's not enough solar coming in, it will then pull it out of the battery. And if there's not enough battery and solar combined, it will switch to grid. So that's how that's set up. Now I've got the charging priorities set. I did have it for solar only and I've tried it solar first. At the moment, I've got it on solar and utility. Now, obviously, during the day, we, we're always getting a bit of solar, even on a cloudy day like this. I mean, hang on, I'll just tell you. <coughs> I mean, it's cloudy out there at the minute, and we're bringing in nearly 400 watts. So it's enough to... Our idle load on the house sort of varies. It's about 150 watts average when the boiler cuts in and the fridge cut in or the fridge and freezer that will have got up to nearly 400 watts so 400 watts will run the house and whatever else is extra it will trickle that into the batteries now there is a load on the inverter which is about 35 watts so whatever the load is on the house it always pulls out 35 watts more because that's what the inverter is using um, it, this inverter is not the most efficient at low usage. Uh, it gets quite, it gets more efficient when you're getting a load of about 2,000 watts on it. It's when it's set best. Anyway, with the batteries, I've got a set now. I mean, they're advertised that they'll do a 6,000 cycle DOD discharge of 95%. So that's pulling the batteries right down to 5% left in the battery. Uh, I didn't want to go that low with them. So I've got it set for 20%. So when the batteries get to 20%, um, it'll, leave, it'll switch to grid and it will charge up via the grid if there's not a lot of solar. Because I don't want the batteries sitting idle for, you know, it could be a week or a fortnight. I don't think that'll do the batteries any good. So, because they're lithium batteries, they like to have a cycle, don't they? So if we've got no solar, and the batteries get to 20%, it will click off, the grid will power the house, and also the grid will charge the batteries. Now I've got it set to go back to battery power when the batteries get to about 50%. Now, when, it's making some funny noises. When the battery gets back to 50%, the, gr the grid power switches off and it, it's pulling power out of the batteries. Um, it probably could if if it wasn't if it was doing that cycle 
you know, three or four times a day, I would have to change it because we'd want the battery to get even higher. But so far it's been working quite well. So you'll you'll get a block on the app of a couple of hours where it charges the battery up from 20% to 50% in a couple of hours. Um, and it's normally pulling about 1100 watts to charge the battery up, something like that. We can't get a cheap tariff here on our electric without changing companies and stuff like that. And because we want to go off grid, we're not going to worry about that. So a lot of people have it set to charge. If there's no solar, if there's not a lot of solar charging the batteries, they'll have it set. You can go in and set your utility charging time. So if you've got like a cheap rate overnight, you could set it so it charges your batteries up on cheap rate overnight. And then during the day when you're on full rate electric, you could use your batteries. Um, but we haven't got that. So, but it's working quite well so far. But um, so, the month of December, it we wasn't fully on solar system as I've explained. EDF, we bought 199 kilowatt hours. Our solar system generated 145.5 kilowatt hours. Now, on our EDF bill, EDF, Enedis, or whoever they're called now. Um, there's what they call an abonnement, which is like a standing charge. That's 17 euros a month just for the privilege of having electricity come to your house. So 17 euros a month is, you know, <laughs> that's for nothing basically. So <clears throat> 199 kilowatt hours comes to just under 32 euros. Now they it was 30, 31 something, but obviously they round it up to 32. So going on that, that's 16 cents per kilowatt hour. So the power that we have generated at home on our own solar system, 145.5, gives us 23 euros. So we've saved 23 euros, basically. Now, the month of January will be the teller because we've got a lot more stuff on the solar system. Um, we've, we've still not got the... I say the Hobbit's oven and the kettle. The only reason we didn't put the kettle on is because if I'm using my oven and the water heater's on and you go and put the kettle on, that overload the inverter straight away. Now, I've got the inverter set. If you overload it, it's it shuts down and it'll go straight to grid. So it's not a problem, but we just don't really want to be doing all that. Now, the plan is... We're newbies at this solar game. Um, I've not got an expert come in to tell us what we need to do. It's, I've just done all my own research, a lot of research, months and months of research to try and find out the best way of doing it. The company where I get all the bits from, I've been asking them questions. They've been really good at answering answering what questions I've asked. Um, so we've, had, we've got this little solar system set up. We've got six panels outside. As you've all seen in previous videos, we've got six panels. We've got the five kilowatt inverter and two lithium batteries from Pylon Tech. That'll give us about almost seven kilowatt hours of storage. So we're getting to a point now where we're sort of working out what we're gonna to need to do now. So we're planning on putting four more panels out there and that will pretty much max out the PV input on this inverter. Now we could put a second string of solar panels with a combiner box and bits and pieces, but when the sun's out, those six panels do a pretty good job of charging these batteries up. I mean, it's only when it's like this, um, you know, it's, it's cloudy um, and we're struggling to get 400 watts in. If we had another four panels out there, we could probably be getting about 800 watts, possibly. So that's, <laughs> got to send the Hobbit out to work next year, um, to earn some pennies to pay for all this. But anyway, so that's four panels we're planning on. Another couple of batteries, now I've got the US 3000Cs and apparently you can mix them. Um, so they do a US 2000C, which is then obviously slightly smaller, but slightly less expensive. So I can fit two of those in this rack. So that'll be another two batteries, which will get our storage just over 10 kilowatt hours, which I think, I mean, on our EDF app, it shows that we're averaging 10 to 12 kilowatt hours a day on our electric usage. So if we have 10 kilowatt storage, and obviously the solar power powers the loads first on the house, the storage will be fine. And then a second inverter. 
that we can parallel up with this one. There's communication cables go between the two. I can run them both off the same battery bank, but I only have solar going into one of them, and that will give us 10 kilowatts of power on the house. So we could pretty much go off grid with that. So it's a little bit more spending next year, but we did expect it. Well, we wasn't expecting to um, put in a little system and think, yeah, that's it, that's going to sort us out. But you're sort of investing in for the future, aren't you? So if we can get off grid, that stops our abonnement of 17 euros a month, which, you know, it's over 200 euros a year just for a privilege of having electric in your house. Um, and then obviously we'll be generating our own electric, and it should, in a couple, you know, four to five years pay for itself that's the plan but uh, we'll have a quick look on the app for the grow what and we'll have a quick look on the app for edf so here's the grow what app uh, on this page here you can see basically what's happening at the moment so on this side here we've got solar coming in 531 watts uh, there's nothing coming in from the grid at the moment so the solar coming into the inverter here and that's the load on the house is 235 watts so it's powering the load and it's also putting a little bit of charge into the battery. So you've got 254 watts. So your battery is at 31%. So over here, this box here, this is solar coming in. So we've done 1.5 kilowatt hours of solar today. This is our total. Discharged, this is what we've discharged out of the battery. Um, this is what we've charged today at 1.5 kilowatt hours. This is our total. Now the total here is different from um, this total here because we've actually charged using the grid at some point. This is imported from grid. So since we've had it all up and running, we've imported almost 65 kilowatt hours. That's for um, grid pass through when there's no solar and the batteries are right down. The grid will power the loads and it will also charge the batteries as well. This is our load consumption. So in total, 167.5 kilowatt hours, but today it's 1.6. So that's just your overview of like what's coming in and what's happening in the present right now. So we can scroll down here. This is where it gets interesting. You've got your energy. So you can come from midnight all the way through. So the load is very low, sort of 27 up to 99 watts. 27 25 20 you know it, it went up a little bit there i don't know what that was that was at quarter to five this morning i mean the heater might have come on i'm not sure but then the hobbit normally gets up at to seven o'clock so but the kettle isn't on this so we come right through here solar starts coming in you know from about nine o'clock ish and then there's this big spike, that's when the Hobbit put the washing machine on. That's quite a big load, 1800 watts, 1700. And then the solar has been sort of up and down here. That's for today. So if we can go back, I'll go right back to um, the 15th of December. This is the 15th. This was when we didn't have a lot of loads on the, um, the solar system. So these are just our sort of spikes. That could have been the heater coming on, I'm not sure. But then the solar starts kicking off about 9 o'clock. A couple of spikes here, that would have been the washing machine. So 16th, blue is the solar. And the 17th was when I got all the other loads on the house. So the solar has come in. It's come right up, and then these spikes here would have been either my oven and the washing machine, but then this spike here will be the water heater. Now you'll notice on some of them the solar drops off. Now the solar drops off when your batteries are fully charged and there's not a lot of load, so obviously we've you know the solar has been coming in at 1800 watts nearly and the load on the house is only 138 and then it's dropped right off 900 300 down to 44 it could be that the sun went in but it's more likely that there's no load and then when the water heater come on um 
solar was coming in at 1530 watts but the water heater was demanding 1860 so it would have been pulling some of that out of the batteries so that was uh, the 17th 18th we've got a nice big solar curve there sort of it sort of kicks off about nine o'clock in the morning at this time of year goes all the way over and it sort of tails off by about 20 to 4 we're still getting solar at about four o'clock but then it tails right off solar curve 18th 19th you know this block here is the water heater um this one's likely to be the washing machine the solar curve is a little bit lower on this one, um, not as much sun. Very good solar curve on that one. Oh, it's just taking us back to today. So let's go back to 24th. And you see here, we're not getting a lot of solar in. So what's happened here, this block is we're charging the batteries up on the grid. So we're importing from the grid 1200 watts and it's that is what's charging the batteries. And it takes from sort of that's quarter past five till half past seven and that charges the batteries back up to 50 percent and you can see here at um, about 11 o'clock it started charging again so the next day that will come into there but um so yeah so that was christmas day and then on here it tells you how much solar charge you've done and how much grid power you've done and then over this side we've got load consumption um, so the load on the house that day was 10.7 kilowatt hours which is a, an average for us so 4.1 of that was done through the solar 6.6 .6 was done by the grid because we didn't have a lot of um, solar production that time 26 no solar production again um, so the inverter looked 2.3 kilowatt hours We've only managed to charge the batteries up with 1.3 kilowatt hours of solar. The rest was done on the grid. Now we get a little bit of a spike with solar. Sun's come back out, but this big block here, we've charged the batteries up on the grid. Another day with very little solar. And again, 29th. And then the 30th, the sun comes out to play. So we charged up in the morning. And then obviously the solar's come out and done its thing. And then the last day of December, nice big solar curve there. So that's that. Um, this is your battery information, Your, your uh, how much you've discharged your battery per day. So yesterday we discharged it 4.8 kilowatts. That day was 4 kilowatts. And, you know, it... It doesn't go back too far, but it gives you enough of an idea. And this is the battery state of charge for today. So at midnight, we started at 48%. By about quarter past 11, we was down to 22%, but now it's back up to 31%. So down the bottom here, it's the same as the app. I mean, I'm doing this on the computer. It's much better on the computer. So just a little bit of trivia. Um, CO2 reduced 159 kilograms. We've reduced deforestation by nine trees, and we've saved... 63.8 kilograms of standard coal now there is another thing you can go to on here uh, this is the energy so this is the solar power that we've brought in today obviously the sun comes in comes out and goes back in again so obviously there it was a bit now it's gone back up it's you know at, as of four minutes ago that was nearly 1400 watts coming in but what we can do on this is we can go back a day or we can do it with per day Hang on. and then I can go back to this is the month of December so this is kilowatt hours coming in so you can go through and see so one day we got 10.1 kilowatt hours um, that's the best we've had so far but uh, yeah it's all good stuff so Yesterday we did 9.2 kilowatt hours and today so far we've done 1.6 but it's a very cloudy day today. That is pretty much the app. Um, just an overview, lets you know what's happening, what's coming in, what's going out and that's it. Right, so this is the EDF app. You can see here 2021. Um, this is 
price wise I can change it to kilowatt hours so so far well last year up until the 30th of December um, we saved 1226 kilowatt hours that's not because of the solar that's because we've cut down a lot of our electric consumption we got rid of the dishwasher um, got rid of a, an old chest freezer which was very inefficient and other bits and pieces that we've just done that we've reduced our consumption so if I go back to May last last year was the highest month for 88 euros and then you can see the graph it goes down so if I put kilowatt hours that was 447 kilowatt hours for May let's take you through till October and November we're sort of averaging just under 300 kilowatt hours a month so that's 293 for September 289 for October 288 for November and December 199 kilowatt hours now that is what we've imported from EDF for our loads that aren't on the solar system and also when the, we're not generating enough solar obviously when the batteries drop right down it will switch to grid and it will charge the batteries so obviously when the weather's not great because we're still grid tied it will still use a bit of um, of the grid so that's that let me just go to here <coughs> um, so I can click on here so this is the 30th of December now these little spikes at 0 0.03 euros is, uh, let me switch it to kilowatt hours. So all throughout, um, right. Not sure what that spike is. Might have been the board. No, not the board. The board is on solar. Oh, this spike might have been where it, <laughs> it was pulling power from the grid to charge the batteries. So, from midnight right up until six o'clock in the morning, we've not pulling any power out of the grid. And then at six o'clock till eight thirty, you can see the spike. That's where it was pulling out power from the grid to charge the batteries because once your batteries are then charged up it will then switch back to solar whether the trouble is we can't get a cheap tariff for out of hours otherwise I could set the inverter to charge the batteries at certain hours for cheap electric but we can't get that so but if I keep going down here um, these little spikes 0 0.12 0 0.11 0 0.8, 0 0.10, 0 0.9, 0 0.9. That's when the Hobbit fires up the kettle. <laughs> but other than that, between them, it's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 0.1, 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So once we get the kettle on solar, we won't even be getting those spikes. Um, we still can't guarantee that we won't use grid power because obviously you can't guarantee the weather. That's the one downside with solar. When the sun's gone in, you're not generating power. Um, but when you get onto a solar system, you just have to change your lifestyle a little bit. You have to sort of adapt to what power you've got in the house. Be aware of what you've got in your batteries and and change the way you're living. It's not a big deal. I mean, people say, oh, oh, price of electric, what's the point of pissing about? But I mean, we're trying to get off grid, um, be a bit more independent with our power I know it's, it has cost us a bit of money and people are saying, oh, well, you know, that's going to take you years to pay that back. That's it for this video. Um, these videos don't get a lot of views, not as much as the Range Rover videos, but the views that the, the people that do watch it are quite interesting. A lot of you have been asking about our solar performance. I will do an update once a month, but I'll try and keep it nice and short. Um, this one was obviously the first update explaining how it's all working. Um, I've gone through the app in a bit of detail in in the upcoming months 
I won't go into as much detail. I'll just show you the stats, and that'll be it. And um, if you're interested, if the uh, if the videos start dying a death, I shan't bother doing it anymore. But uh, for those of you that are interested, this is what's happened in our first month. Sun's just trying to break through the clouds, but I don't think we're going to get a lot today. So um, at some point, we'll be going back to grid, and the grid will charge the batteries up. So that's it for this one. Hope you liked it. Please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.